Hi, I'm Miss Huffman. And I'm Miss B. Welcome to Two, Two Teachers, Teachers, a place where we can read and learn together. together. Like and subscribe. Hello, friends. This week we have been talking about something a little serious. We've been talking about bullying and bullying behaviors. Do you remember what bullying is? Well, that's right. Bullying is when you see someone treating other people unfairly. They could be teasing them or maybe saying mean things or they might actually be hurting them. And we know that bullying is not okay. And we can help to stop a bully by telling them, stop, I don't like that. And if you are being bullied, you can tell that person, stand strong where you are, use your big voice and say, stop. I don't like that. And make sure you use your serious face so they know that you're not kidding. Or if you see someone else being bullied, you can be a friend. You can come over to that situation and help out the person who is maybe being picked on or being teased and say, hey, I don't like it when you treat my friend that way. And then you can ask your friend, are you okay? Let's go play. And if you're a friend, well, that might be all that someone needs to help stop a bully from using mean words or actions. Or, you know, there's safety in numbers. So the more of you that play together and the more of you that stand up to a bully, stop, the more chances you are to solve your own problems. But we also know that sometimes we can't solve all of our problems ourselves and we need to ask a trusted adult for help. That means if you already tried to use your words and tell the person stop, if you already came over and maybe saw when someone was being treated unfairly and tried to work together, there are more of you that tried to solve the problem and it still didn't work, you should go to a parent, a teacher, or a caregiver, whoever is there who is watching you and making sure that you're safe, and you can tell them what's going on. And it's always okay to tell when you see someone being unsafe or when you see bullying happening. But I also want to talk about sometimes bullying isn't that obvious. Sometimes bullying is just seeing someone being left out or not treated fairly. And that's why I chose this book today. This book is called The Invisible Boy, and it comes to us from a kindergartner here at Maplewood, Ari Samario. So thank you, Ari, for sharing this book with me so that I can share it with everyone in kindergarten. Let's start reading, shall we? The Invisible Boy by Trudy Ludwig, illustrated by Patrice Barton. And inside you can see, Ari left me such a sweet note and signed it himself. Thanks for the gift, Ari. The Invisible Boy by Trudy Ludwig, illustrated by Patrice Barton. And while we read, I want you to think about what's the unfair behavior that you're seeing? Can you see Brian, the invisible boy? Even Mrs. Colotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She is busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. Do you see who they're calling the invisible boy? Nathan has problems with what Mrs. Carlotti calls volume control. He uses his outside voice inside too much. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian doesn't. When the bell rings for recess, Micah and JT take turns choosing kids for their kickball team. The best players get picked first when the best friend and then the friends of the best players then the friends of the best friends and then only brian is left still waiting and hoping jt glances in brian's direction and just as quickly looks away we've got enough players for each team he tells the others let's play ball Notice how Brian is feeling here. Do you notice anything else about this character? Huh. 
I wonder why the illustrator chose to draw him like that instead of like the other characters. In the cafeteria, Madison and her friends talk about her birthday party. The rope swing over the pool was awesome, says JT. Yeah, so was the water slide, adds Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, says Madison. Everybody did, except Brian. He wasn't invited. At choosing time, while the other kids play board games and read, Brian sits at his table doing what he loves best. He draws fire-breathing dragons scaling tall buildings. Thank you for toasting my marshmallow. Space aliens locked in intergalactic battles. I got you now. Greedy pirates digging for treasure. Crackers, arg! Yay! And superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. Hi. Hi, friend. Have a cookie. One Monday morning, Mrs. Carletti introduces Justin, a new student, to the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids sneak looks at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. They haven't quite made up their minds yet. At lunch, Madison and TJ watch Justin eat with chopsticks. What's that? asks Madison as she points at Justin's food. It's bulgogi. Bull what? Bulgogi. It's Korean barbecued beef. My grandma made it for me. It's really good. Do you want to try some? There's no way I'd eat booger ghee. Oh, is that the same thing Justin said? Bulgogi? Mm, that doesn't seem quite kind, does it? And all the kids laugh. All of them, that is, except Brian. He sits there wondering which is worse being laughed at or feeling invisible. The next day, when Justin goes to his cubby to put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. Justin, I thought the bulgogi looked good. Brian, yum. At morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing away. You're Brian, right? Yeah. Thanks for the note. Hey, Justin, Emilio calls from the tetherball court. You're up next. Sorry, I gotta go, says Justin. By the way, that's a really cool drawing, he adds before taking off. Friends, look what's going on with the illustrations now. Did you notice something that changed with Brian? Huh. I wonder why the illustrator changed that. Back in class, Mrs. Carletti asks the kids to team up in twos or threes for a special project. The kids scurry around the room to pair off. Brian heads towards Justin. I'm already with Justin, says Emilio. Find someone else. Brian looks at the floor, wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Mrs. Carletti said we can have up to three people in our group. We're only two. Come on, Emilio. Let him work with us. Okay, I guess. <gasps> Do you notice the change in illustration on Brian? Mrs. Carletti gives the class directions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in that photograph. Use your imagination and have fun. 
Whoa, cool, says Emilio. What kind of people do you think live in houses like that? I don't know, but I bet Brian could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pin. The chalkboard reads, The Crooked Story We Made Up on the Spot. It's lunchtime again, Brian's least favorite part of the day. Another 20 long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Brian! He hears someone shout his name. Hey, Brian, over here! Brian turns and sees Justin waving him over. Emilio nods at Brian as he makes room for him at the table. Cookie? Thanks. Maybe, just maybe, Brian's not so invisible after all. So as we were reading this, were you thinking about who was being kind in the story and who was maybe being unfair? Now, I wanna remind you that bullying is serious and we don't just go around calling everyone who's mean a bully. No, of course not. That would be name calling. We don't just call people bullies because they make mistakes or maybe they're rude and whoops, I shouldn't have said that and they can apologize. Everyone makes mistakes every now and then, but if someone continues to make that mistake or they are hurting people's feelings or ignoring on purpose, then we do need to stand up to them and tell them, hey, I don't like it when you treat others like that. Thanks for reading the story, The Invisible Boy, with me. Until next time, bye.